And we also continue to track what is now Tropical Storm Idalia, which is quickly moving north, but not before leaving behind a massive storm surge in Florida. One little known island community tucked along Florida's nature coast. Cedar Creek saw some of the worst conditions earlier today. Take a look at some of the damage. You can see homes being flooded and debris floating across what used to be roads. NBC's Jay Gray rode things out this morning, 60 miles from Cedar Key in Gainesville. He joined gives us rather a closer look at the hardest hit areas. Good evening, Daniela. Good evening, Keith. And it was a rough overnight and early morning here, but the most significant damage from Dahlia here in Florida was along the coast where it made landfall, a powerful warning for tens of thousands still in the path of the storm. Hurricane Idalia punishing Florida's coast, sustained winds of 125 miles an hour at landfall, peeling away this gas station canopy, and a storm surge of 10 feet or more, pushing a wall of water into places it's never been before. Idalia speeding up over land, but maintaining its intensity. The trade-off is, is we get a little less rain maybe, but still enough rain to cons cause considerable impacts from flash and urban flooding, uh, especially as we go into tonight and Thursday. As the system pushes through. This is an exceptional one, big one. Residents in Cedar Key get a first-hand look at their soaked and battered town. It doesn't look good. Uh, our, all of our commercial buildings downtown are underwater. Uh, a, a huge percentage of our homes have been inundated with water. Um, you can see I'm standing in the middle of uh, State Road 24 right now, and it's uh, completely underwater. Near Tampa, entire communities flooded. Paddleboards now the best way to get around. Everything's underwater. It's like Venice, <laughs> Italy. Task force teams and first responders working through that water and into some of the hardest hit areas. All eight uh, urban search and rescue teams uh, are uh, deployed. Uh, our National Guard uh, has folks uh, in places like Taylor County. Uh, they're getting on scene there to do things like clear uh, major pieces of the roads and, and get debris that, is, that has been uh, knocked around. But not knocked out, though in some places it will take months to recover. Now there are still tornado watches and warnings across Florida as the Dahlia now pushes through Georgia where there's been significant flooding already. The next target for this storm, the Carolinas. In Gainesville, Jay Gray, KPRC 2 News. Uh, let's get right to KPRC 2 Chief Meteorologist Frank Billingsley. Frank, what's the latest with the track right now? You know, right along the coast of the Carolinas, it looks like, and then out to sea, there was some talk that it might try to loop back toward the Gulf. That talk is, de is done. None of the models suggest that. But here we go. 70 mile an hour winds gusting to 85, moving northeast at 21. So a pretty strong movement there. It's going to be fairly quick as it moves across the Carolinas. And right offshore by this time tomorrow, it'll be in the Atlantic. But it's still going to be a fairly long evening and overnight for South Carolina and into parts of North. Carolina, especially with the heavy rains that will move across. And as it continues into the Atlantic, may make a bit of a play for Bermuda as at least a tropical storm. So they're dealing with a little bit of Franklin right now. So they may be dealing with that this weekend. All these boxes you can see, especially these red ones that show up, those are tornado warnings, flash flood warnings, flash flood watches. It's really all about the water there. They're looking for not only the winds, but a lot of flooding is going to be fairly significant as this continues to push across. For us, we're in much better shape. Temperatures have reached 100, but that humidity continues to be on the low side. How long that lasts coming up in weather, Danny? Thank you. You can stay up to date with Hurricane Idalia and the very latest using the KPRC2 Storm Tracker Hurricane app. It shows you the projected path in real time. It is free to download. Just scan the QR code right there on your screen or search for KPRC in your app store. And now we want to get to our dangerous heat. Once again, the state is asking Texans to reduce electricity starting in about an hour or so. Oh, here's a live look at the current grid conditions. The power conservation request is from 6 o'clock this evening until nine o'clock tonight. Helping students who have nowhere else to turn coming up why Rice University is opening its doors to those who don't even attend the school. And then while Tropical Storm Idalia rolls through the East Coast, several local organizations are sending help for those in need. What kind of aid is heading their way? Next on KPRC2 News at five.
Rice University is opening its doors to students who don't attend the school after several colleges and universities complied with new state law restricting promotion of diversity, equity and inclusion. A student led group offering honorary admission to area students who seek LGBTQ resources. KPRC 2's Real One Belogan is live from Rice University to explain why Rice University can offer this program and others cannot. Real One. Daniela Rice University is a private institution, so they don't get any, if any, much money that is from the state. So because of this, they don't have to comply with SB 17 and shut down some of their programs or facilities. Public colleges and universities statewide need to comply with SB 17 or lose significant state funding. It's a new law requiring schools to close their diversity, equity and inclusion offices. At Rice University, a student led group opening its doors. We wanted to have a helping hand. We really needed to uh, when legislation like this tries to divide us. It is important for us to stand together regardless of what university or what background we come from. Rice Pride offering honorary membership to students at area schools for those seeking community or resources. Since they made this Instagram post, Jorge Arnez Gonzalez said the group has heard from nearly 100 students from 20 different colleges and universities. Fortunately, we had a positive response from uh, students in the neighboring universities. In our area, these are the public colleges and universities impacted by Senate Bill 17. Of these schools, we heard from U of H and San Jacinto. U of H announced earlier this month it's closing the LGBTQA Resource Center and the Center for Diversity and Inclusion while opening a new center for student advocacy and community. San Jacinto College doing the same. Now, public colleges and universities have until January to comply with SB 7 or 17, that is, or run the risk of losing significant state funding. Live from Rice University, Roman Belogan, KPRC, 2 News.